Hey guys, how's it going? I was meant to do this review a couple days ago when I went and seen Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, but some things that came up and I had to, I had to delay it for a little while, but I figure I'd get my thoughts on it real quick. Um, this is just going to be my first review uploading to the new website or wherever I'm uploading this from. So bear in mind if I leave some things out it's because I'm kind of restarting some things since I did my introduction video. So there's going to be some things that I'm probably going to leave out in this review. And I'm going to try to keep spoilers minimum because this is a movie that I've been wanting to talk about for a while now. And for those of you who are new to the videos that I'm doing, if I leave some things out, keep in mind this is just one of my early videos re-uploading it to the new site that I'm using. So keep in mind if I leave some things out, it's it's perfectly fine if it's understandable. But anyway, I fear to get my thoughts on the new Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Um, going back to the original first one, I went and seen Rise of the Planet of the Apes, a couple, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, the first one, a few years ago when it first came out in the theaters, and I was really looking forward to it. I grew up watching the Planet of the Apes films when I was younger. I remember it coming on TV and remember the first one, the one with Charlton Heston back in the day, and, well, I mean, I wasn't born back in the day, but I'm just saying I grew up watching the movie when it aired on TV a couple of times, and I really enjoyed the original Planet of the Apes films. I like how, okay, I'm not familiar with the book, but I like how it's a futuristic world where pretty much the these apes are in a way like humans, but they are so intelligent that they pretty much enslave all humans to, to teach them, to treat them like they're, to, to be tests on them because they're dumb and they're unintelligible. And the fact that they want to pretty much after they've enslaved humanity and they realize that the humans are more than what there there the, there was a time when they realized that humans were still smart but then as they progress it, it became the opposite the the apes discovered that when they treated the humans like like animals they it was kind of like how they were when they were being tested on by by humans when they were when they were animals and I really enjoyed the original films. I mean, the, as the films later on, they kind of got a little silly after a while, like Battle of the Planet of the Apes. But there are some, a few of them that I really do enjoy. I, I love the first one with Charlton Heston. I thought it was a, it's a classic. The second, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, is probably one of my least favorites. It, it does some good things with the atom bomb, and and it has some good ideas with the, with these like mutant characters and everything. But it really I mean, it does continue the story and all, but it feels like a more, like, personal sequel that just happens to have, you know, a lot more, how do I describe it? It's it's one of those films that picks up from when the story leaves off, but we introduce to another sign, another astronaut who later discovers of what happens to Charlton Heston's character, and and there's some pretty good things going on in the film, but it's it's probably it's kind of slow in some parts and it really just isn't my it's probably my least favorite now the third one the uh escape from the planet of the apes i really did enjoy i thought that i liked the idea of how it's kind of a fish out of war story where you have the two doctor apes from the first one dr zaeus and or not dr zaeus uh, cornelius and uh I forgot the other name's name, but they go back in time and they pretty much restart the timeline because with the first film, it's years and years and years down the future where the Charlton Heston character Taylor discovers that all of humanity is gone and that as we discover in Beneath the Planet of the Apes that all of human civilization is in like ruins, like in, in underground areas and everything. So Escape pretty much restarts the whole timeline to begin with. So in a way, you can kind of see that Escape from the Planet of the Apes is kind of a reboot, kind of in a way, because it restarts the whole timeline because it goes back in time. And then Conquest, I was probably my favorite because that to me is where you really got the idea of how these apes take over everything and they 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 start an all-out war with the humans at the end when the lead character Caesar, who's also in the new Planet of the Apes, the new Apes films, he goes berserk. He he actually decides that he wants to be a leader of his own. He wants to be the one person, be the one ape who wants to 
pretty much rebuild his own society and make all the apes take over. And it, it's just a it's just it's just an underrated sequel, you know. It it really does dwell by his. It's pretty dark in, in a lot of scenes, you know, and especially the mood and the atmosphere and the music. It really holds up. I haven't really seen all of Battle of the Planet Apes, but from what I've seen from that film, it is pretty campy in some parts. Even watching it nowadays, I can see that movie is probably the worst out of the series, but I haven't seen all of it, so I can't really judge it too well. I'm not a fan of Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. I watched that movie when I was younger, and I'll admit I liked it the first time, but as time grew on, that movie really killed it for me with that ending. Because with the remake with Mark Wahlberg, I... It was too, I mean, the plot was a little too confusing for me, and they were pretty much do, they were doing a lot of things that were different, that I don't mind different, but too, so much different from the original Planet of the Apes that it shouldn't even really be called Planet of the Apes, because one of the stupidest things they do is they test humans who are not even dumb, you know, they're, they're just regular humans who are still smart, you know, and they're capable of outsmarting the apes to begin with. You know, it's about, they remind me of humans from, from fucking Battle of, of the, or I'm sorry, Battlefield Earth. You know, it's just, it's just one of those things where it's a, well, okay, it's a reimagining, so to speak. But that ending really killed it for me when you discover that when Mark Wahlberg goes back in time and he finds out that in modern day Earth that the Ipes have pretty much, like, <laughs> I don't know, it's it's kind of, I'd have to rewatch it again, but when you know the ending where he goes up to the Lincoln Memorial and he notices that the lead apes, the, the, the Lincoln's head, and instead of it's his own head, it's an ape's head. And I was just like, what? You know, it, it's just, yeah. But then I watched Rise of Plenty Apes, and I really did enjoy Rise of Plenty Apes. I thought that it was a good story with Caesar and the lead character played by James Franco, Will Rodman. I like their their connection together and how he trains him to be who he is. And I really did love the concept of how it's pretty much they, they're making this drug to help the humans. They're testing on animals to help or apes to help them grow smarter and, and go with beyond normal intelligence. You know, and it's it's a really good concept. And yeah, it was kind of used before in other movies like Deep Blue Sea and all that, but I still got a kick out of it. Now, and I really, I know a lot of people have kind of complained about the CGI in the first one, but I still dug it. I thought that the CGI still worked. You know, you really got to see the motion capture taken with these, with the apes in certain scenes. I mean, yeah, there's a couple of scenes that are pretty overdone with CGI, like the scene when uh, they go to the zoo and you notice that there's their obvious CGI that they couldn't get real apes for. And yeah, that was a little out of place, but I still thought the action scenes were pretty good. And when you actually see all the apes in, in sort of like in a whole group, they still look fine with the CGI, you know. And I really did how it led up to pretty much how instead of the apes taking over, it was pretty much a virus that spreads, because that's where this new one comes in. And from the trailers that I've seen of the new Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, I was really, really looking forward to this. And much to my surprise. Again, I we come across a sequel that's even better than the first one, in my opinion, because there's already been two movies this year that I thought were better than the than the originals. I thought I just recently watched The Raid Two, and I know a lot of people have said this as well. And sure, there might be a few who disagree, but yeah, I did watch The Raid Two, and it is, by all counts, a good, a damn good sequel. It surpasses the the story. It surpasses the original with a lot of the martial arts and skills and you know, it does better with the story, and and so did X-Men Days of Future Past. That, to me, is a really good sequel. It, it to me, was one of my favorite sequels to the X-Men and since X-Men 2. And, uh, but going back to Donald the Planet Apes, I really did enjoy this film a lot. I thought that the lead performances, especially Andy Serkis, who played Caesar, was really top-notch. He really... I mean, yeah, it's all in motion capture, but when you see him and you see his eyes, you can tell that this is a guy who's really putting a lot of heart into this character. He really wants to make this character work, and he's not a monster. You know, the character Caesar, he's he's sympathetic, but he has his own rules. You know, and because it, it's about eight to ten years later after the first one, when the virus spreads, and uh, 
well, pretty much everyone in the world, with the exception of like a like a very few survivors, have survived the virus. And the apes are trying to live in their own society, and then the humans are trying to live in their own society. But the problem is, since the apes are still trying to adapt to their life, there's the humans who are led by the character play, Dreyfus, played by Gary Oldman. And I really did enjoy Gary Oldman's performance in the movie, but he's kind of underused in a lot of scenes because you don't see him as much. Like, because when you break it down, he's a guy who had lost his, uh, his, his family. Uh, and he, he, at first you kind of think of him just like, he's a monster, you know, he just doesn't care about AIDS, but he actually does have a motive behind what he's doing. You know, he's not really, he's very stricken, but you wouldn't really necessarily call him a villain. No, that is when you get to the character Cobra, play, who is, uh, Caesar's right hand assistant who helps him out and, this guy, man, if you want to talk about apes who go berserk, this is one guy you do not want to mess with because this is the kind of guy who he does. He hates all humans to begin with. And this ape, he, he wants to just pretty much be Caesar the way he's supposed to be, kind of like how he was in Conquest of the Parent Planet of the Apes. Because this Koba ape, man, you see him go berserk. You, you, you see him doing this scene where these two guys it's in the trailer if you've seen it these two guys are are watching at the at the gates or whatever and then koba does like this weird trick where he actually spins around and takes the gun and starts blasting both of them and it's it's pretty brutal you know i'll admit this movie really did got me in a lot of scenes because it is pretty emotional with with how the music is built and if you look at it it's kind of like a very quiet film because it has a lot of scenes where the apes are communicating by sign language and you really get to feel the intensity of their performances from uh, from Caesar and the rest of the apes. And I actually really did enjoy the character, the human characters too. Like, I thought the guy, uh, Jason Clark, I think his name, I thought he did a good job. I thought he put a lot of role into carrying a sympathetic, good, good guy who just wants to have peace and not really get into a lot of trouble with the apes. Because he has to, the whole plot is that the humans are, are losing fuel and supplies from where they're went, from where they're they're staying at, and the one of the guys who's played by Jason Clark, he has to go after with these other handful of people, and they have to go after to the dam where the apes are living at, and they have to negotiate with the apes in order to get the power back on, and that becomes kind of a problem because the hu the, the apes don't trust humans. And as the story progresses, you start to realize that Caesar has a lot of feelings toward the humans because he realizes that not all of them can are a threat to him. And as far as direction wise, this is a really beautifully shot film. There's a there's cinematography scenes when you see like the trees, when you see the apes coming in the opening scene, when they're going after the deer and everything. It's a really brilliant shot. And also the effects too. I thought the effects in this one were even better than the first one, in my opinion. They they really show the good use of the CGI where they don't overdo it. Because to me, when it comes to CGI, it's either good played, you know, played out well if it's rendered properly, if it has a good use for it. Like for example, going back to Jurassic Park, you know, that's CGI, but it's mixed in with like animatronics and things. You know, this one, even though the apes are all CGI, it's still motion capture to where you can still tell it, it still looks pretty real for the most of it. And I know a lot of people always complain about CGI, and that's fine, you know. Everyone has their own opinion about how technology should work nowadays, especially with what we use for films. But to me, it's like, in this day and age, CGI is pretty much going to take over everything. You know, and that can be either a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, in my opinion, I prefer practical effects. I do. I'm an old, I, I'm an old school type of, you know, film guy. I, I prefer practicals over CGI, but that I don't, I'm not saying I hate CGI. I'm just saying it's always good when something looks real than something that looks like a cartoon. And this one doesn't do that. You know, the, the effects still look real, but, uh, yeah, that's, and, and that, and also too, the, the dark, the action scenes are really freaking dark in this movie like you like there's this one scene where the apes are invading the city and you see them riding horses and shit and they're carrying machine guns and this is pretty much what will lead into the, the next movie where 
you actually get to see the, the apes becoming who they were in the original films. Because, not spoiling anything, but they are hinting at the, of the next film after this one. And so, if you do get a chance to go see it, I highly, highly recommend this film. A lot. It's got great act, acting, especially from Caesar, played by Andy Serkis. I mean, this guy is going places, you know. I also enjoyed performances of, of Jason Clark and even Carrie, uh, what's her last name? I forgot her last name. His his wife in the movie was pretty good, too. I liked her. I've seen her in some things like The Americans and Waitress and, you know, some other things like that. And I think she's a, I think she's a good actress. And I also enjoy Gary Oldman's performance, of course. Even though he's not in it a whole lot, he, for the most part, he, he does what he can. And I also enjoyed the action scenes, and I also enjoyed the music as well. The music is very, very moody. Like, if you're talking about music as far as, you know, epic, like, well, not really epic, but like, something that really builds a lot of suspense and a lot of intense, like, really dark scenes, this is the kind of music to go to. Because I'm not sure who did the music for this movie, but whoever did really did a great job in capturing the mood and the the atmosphere of all the scenes that play out. And the director, uh, forgot his name, but he, he, Rupert Evans, I think that's his name, yeah. Um, he, he does a great job with the direction, and I didn't see the film in 3D because I kind of feared, well, I prefer watching 2D because it's not really my kind of thing to watch movies like this to be converted into 3D, so I didn't see it in 3D, but if any of you did watch in 3D, just, just let me know in the comments. But yeah, that's really all I've got. I mean, I highly recommend the film. I know it's been out for a while now, and I've been kind of late getting to this review, but I did really enjoy it, and I hope to see the next one coming out. You know, because this is a film that I've been looking forward to a while, and this to me, it's kind of hard to put in comparison to other films because I don't usually do that a lot. But it, to me, it does rank up there as far as sequels that are better than originals. Like it's up there with Hunger Games, Catching Fire, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, the Dark Knight, and you know, just other movies that came out that were even that were managed to not only expand the story but also give you what you always wanted to begin with. And to me, this deserves an A plus, a definitely a good ten out of ten score. And I was, and I guess that's about it. Um, there's gonna be some more videos I'll be uploading here soon. I might be doing a review a review of the Purge Anarchy when it comes out, or since it's already out. But if not, I'll be I'll be watching some other films that come out later this year. And so until then, I hope everyone has a good rest of the week. And I shall see you guys in my next review. Take care.